I would like to say a few words about the mini jeeps that are kind of sweeping the internet. Here is one video showing what it's like. So it's very small, but a fully grown adult can sit in it. And if you really want to squeeze a girlfriend next to you, that's possible. You can definitely carry groceries. And so you can, you can use it for what most people would use a car in a suburban or even urban environment. These Jeeps cost about $3,000 or even less and they are available all over the place. I'm gonna put some links uh, below. You can get them from Amazon in a bunch of different places. Obviously at this price point, you are getting cheap Chinese quality crap. Everything is cheap, there is a, a molded plastic body it's it's not a steel or aluminum body and what they are using for motor is really very similar to the japanese um, mini motos for example if you look at the honda monkey the honda monkey is actually much more expensive it's over four thousand dollars there are some other uh, bikes from honda such as the honda grom which is a little bit less expensive than the monkey but still more expensive than than the <clears throat> than the Jeep. And if you look at the motor, this is the motor that powers the Jeep, but a Chinese copy of it. So this is 125. It can get you 100 miles to a gallon, even with four wheels, let alone with two wheels. And this is a neat little Japanese built engine, but what you get here from the Jeep is just it's just lesser quality. Everything is screwed together sloppily. So when you get it, first of all, you might get it in a kit form. So you would have to assemble it, which is actually better. But you can see that, that uh, there is a decent frame here that can be a starting point to build something. You could, I would probably want to replace the engine with a higher quality Japanese engine and possibly order this, this kit without the motor so I would not have to pay the money for it. The tires are, I guess, okay initially. This is the motor, I mean the engine. It's a tiny 125. None of this is expensive. None of this is expensive to replace or to repair. It's very easily accessible. You can access anything, replace anything, so it's not a big deal. The way it's screwed together also has to be checked out because just as I said before, this is flimsy, quality flimsy built. The reason there is such an interest in them is because the concept is simply brilliant. Consider that the average suburban person can use this Jeep to get around locally, pick up groceries, go to the post office, and ultimately to drive down to the train station or the bus station to go to the big city or to go somewhere long range. Now some people are going to need a full-sized car to to, to do what they need to do. But for a lot of people, this is enough and it's actually cheaper to get into the game than to buy a brand new Japanese Minimoto. And it has four wheels, so you can use it in the winter if you have a warm coat, because there's not much of any weather protection. And you can get around with it pr pretty well. I think the, the top speed might be 30 miles an hour or something. So, one concern would be, how do you register? How do you make this road legal? In most cases, they're very attractive looking little toys for sure. So what you can do is, in some areas, the cops wouldn't even pull you over, so long that you stay off of the main roads. In New York City and in many towns around New York, I doubt that they would even bother to pull you over. But in many areas, you would want to register it. And there are two ways of doing that, which is, which is either that you register it as a low-speed neighborhood vehicle, which has a maximum speed limit of 25, in some cases, 35 miles an hour. Or another one, a more interesting registration is if you can show receipts that you built it, you bought the parts separately, mainly just the chassis and the engine. 
So if you have receipts to do that, then you can register it and so long that you have the lights, the rear view mirror, and you can see that it actually comes with some lights and mirror. So you don't need to add much and you could register it with no speed limit. So theoretically legal to, to get onto anything. And the most amazing thing is that somebody has already done this. There was this build of a teeny tiny sub micro car made out of all kinds of parts like um, um, mobility, scooter, toys, whatever. This guy put it together and he was able to register it in Texas. So here he is in Texas in driving around. Well, this is way smaller than the Jeep. So you are literally sitting on top of this thing. But this was fully registered. You can see that it, he has a, a license plate on it. I don't know what the top speed is, but this is entirely home built out of parts that he pulled out of various scooters and toys and whatnot. And so long that you have the lights and the rear view mirrors, you can, you can, and you can submit receipts stating that you bought the main parts separately. They are going. Most states are going to allow you to register it. So my idea is, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this with an interest for a possible build. If I built it, I would probably do an electric, and I would just need the chassis and the skeleton, maybe the seat the steering wheels, things like that. I don't need I don't need the gearbox. I would definitely do an electric uh, and not a gasoline version. There's plenty of space in the case of the Jeep to to put in the back. Like here in the back you could put some batteries in there. And maybe even here into the hood because the, the motor doesn't take up that much space. The concept itself is very intriguing. To have a runabout that costs only a few thousand dollars is very easy to maintain and to repair. And uh, I just don't like the, the gasoline idea too much. I think this should be an electric. After all, you're probably not going very far. Okay, this is it for the current video, and I'll see you in the next one. <coughs> I'll be back.